everyone again at YouTube. I am here today and I am bringing you a new review. And today I am reviewing the brand new movie, Independence Day Resurgence. So, we're in for a rough one on this guy, one guys. So, without further ado, let's get right into the review. In case you guys don't know, Independence Day Resurgence is of course a sequel to the original Independence Day released back 20 years ago, believe it or not, in 1996, a year before I was born, in fact. So I'm almost, so that means I'm almost 20. If you've seen the original Independence Day, good, but if you haven't, there's gonna be kind of spoilers for that. So if you haven't seen the original, go watch that first, and then come back and watch this review. Independence Day Resurgence, of course, continues off from where the first one left off after 20 years uh, after the aliens had attacked Earth and we took out their mothership and everything to make sure that they ended up leaving, the hive mind was done for, uh, we have used their, since then, used the technology that was left by their destroyed ships to make our own futuristic technology, like laser weapons and space colonies on the moon and big ultra mega lasers and spaceships and all of this uh, intergalactic, outer spacey, and futuristic technology. And of course, it turns out that, in fact, the aliens were not done with Earth yet. And it turns out the aliens are back again, this time, to completely exterminate human. Oh, wait, this is the exact same plot as the original Independence Day, isn't it? Yeah, basically, if you've seen the first Independence Day, the plot is basically more or less the same. It's revolving around the aliens that want to exterminate the humans again. Same aliens from the last movie, too. Not a new, new aliens or anything. But this time, they had more time. They had, of course, a lot of time to repair, just as we did. And they have some advanced technology that we, that, uh, in fact, we that the people in this movie aren't prepared for. So it's like, really suspenseful. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you thought I was being serious, too. No, Independence Day Resurgence. <sighs> so in case you can tell over that, Independence Day Resurgence is kind of not as good as the original Independence Day. Because if you've seen the original Independence Day, you'll know why people regard that as you can tell that it's cheesy, you can tell that it's super 90s and super, holy crap, this is kind of not the best movie ever. But Independence Day is filled with so much charisma and great acting and actual suspense and tension and just m more oomph than Independence Day Resurgence that it actually felt like it's a good time. It's a good movie to watch with some good popcorn movie, good campy action, and it's just a fun movie to watch. It's not taking itself that seriously, but when it does, you actually feel a little bit of suspense. So it works out in the end, and that was what was so good about the original Independence Day. However, with this movie, you can definitely tell that some of that oomph and that energy to the overall plot of the movie is kind of gone in the fact that most well there's some of the original cast in here as we all know Jeff Goldblum's in here I think the guy who plays Jeff Goldblum's dad John is named John Hirsch but I cannot be sure of that I could be wrong just tell me if I am uh, we got uh, Bill Pullman is back again as his role as the former he's the former president of the United States now and other than that, I don't think there's actually any other old cast members reprising their roles. And then we got the new cast, which is huge. <laughs> and it's kind of like, why is there so, there's way too many people here? That's not good. That was one of my main problems with the movie, was the new cast. And it's not exactly their fault. It might have been the script's fault. So, I mean, <laughs> who knows? Uh, I can't... I don't know her name, so... I'm sorry about that, but the girl who, she's played um, in It Follows, she was the main character in It Follows, and she was also in The Guest, so if you've seen any of those two movies, you'll probably know who I'm talking about. She plays the president's daughter, and for some reason they couldn't get the little girl 
that played the president's daughter in the original Independence Day. Why? I don't. I don't know. And there's a, a guy playing Will Smith's son from the last movie, but older now, and he's completely bland. He has no character. He's very boring, actually. He's one. Of, he's probably one of my least char favorite characters in the movie. Liam, Hen Liam Hensworth is in this movie, and he plays Liam Hensworth in every other movie he has been in. So, I mean, it, that can be either a good or bad thing for you. It's good for me because I actually don't mind Liam Hemsworth for the most part. I think he's an okay actor. There's this guy also who actually looked familiar. I thought I knew him from somewhere, but he I, apparently I haven't seen him in anything, even though he looked very, very familiar. He plays, like, the friend to Liam, Liam Hemsworth in this movie. Don't actually even remember his name. So, <laughs> he actually wasn't that bad. I thought he was good comedic relief, I want to say, is what he was. his role was. And he did a good job in the movie. There was one character that I thought was freaking unbearable, though. He was completely awful. I think his name is Floyd in the movie. I could be wrong about that. But I think that's his name. And he was the most annoying one. He got way too much screen time. He should not have gotten as much screen time as he had, and it, he was just annoying. He, like The fact that he had so much screen time and how much stuff they had him do just aggravated me. I wanted to punch this guy in the face and send him into a black hole so that he would never be seen in this movie again. It was ridiculous. There's the, if you watch the original Independence Day, you'll know that the guy who was like the scientist who got choked out, you know? He thought he died, and I assumed he died, but he's apparently only in a coma. So he wakes up, of course, and he gets too much screen time as well in this movie. Way too much. Oh my gosh. And, and his char and it worked. His character worked in the original Independence Day because he didn't get a ton of screen time. He got a good, a good like maybe 10, 15 minutes of screen time in that movie. This one he gets almost the entire movie. He's in it, and he's just, and he just ends up getting annoying and on my nerves, and that was really a bad choice <laughs> for the direction uh, of this movie overall. And now I have to talk about the uh, the everything that happens in the movie. So this movie is very bloated. It has way too much going on at one time. There's so many different subplots and characters that you're just like, holy crap, we don't need to know about this family halfway through the movie that's in a car that their parents might have died so that they can find uh, Jeff Goldblum's dad's character and he can drive them... <laughs> Never mind, I'm, that's going to be in spoiler territory there. But seriously, that happens halfway through the movie where these... It just introduces these new kid characters driving in this car, and it's and it makes no sense. Like, why did they introduce these characters this far into the movie? Why? 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 Anyways, I'm sorry about that, but like I said, this movie can get very um, bloated with it, oh, and overloaded with it, all its different subplots at some times that it kind of just ended up not being a fun movie anymore. You felt like you were confused. I didn't feel like I was confused. I shouldn't say that. But I felt like I was just like, okay, I don't want to have to keep a track of this much stuff in this movie. I just want it to be basic. I want it to be a fun action movie. You don't need to tell me about all these characters. That's not important. You need to calm yourself down. Ah. Uh... Anyway. So, now that I've talked about everything I did not like about the movie, I will talk about some things I did like. First thing, of course, the best part of this movie was Jeff Goldblum. With his, um, yeah, his, uh, his dialogue was very, uh, uh, it was, uh, very nice and it's good, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. Yes, for sure, Jeff Goldblum was my favorite part of this movie. He did a fantastic job. He knew exactly what kind of movie he was getting himself into, and he sold every scene that he was in. Same with the guy who plays his dad in the movie. He did an amazing job as well. 
Bill Pullman was really good, I thought, uh, despite the fact that he wasn't, I want to say he wasn't exactly needed, he still was really good in the movie, and that's what I really liked about the movie overall, is that these guys who were coming in that played in the original, they ended up, like, being the best parts of the movie because they knew what kind of movie they were making, and they knew what they wanted to do in the movie, so it made it a better movie than it might have been if they were not in it, like Jurassic World. I mean, come on, just put Jeff Goldblum in Jurassic World too. Just do it. We need Ian Malcolm back. Come on. Oh, man. Yeah, they, they were definitely the best parts of the movie, and it ended up making the movie a lot uh, better, funner for me, and I was just uh, so much more sold on the movie because of these guys. Yeah, so Independence Day Resurgence, while it's not a terrible movie, it definitely doesn't have that same level of, yes, I like it, I, this is movie is kind of not the best thing ever, but I still like it because it's just so great. <laughs> you know, it just, not, I'm not trying to blind, blind it with my sense of nostalgia here, but it just, yeah, it works better as an overall movie, you know what I mean? I, instead of this one, which just doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't work really as a, it, the best movie ever. And at, the way, at certain parts in the movie, I was wondering, is this movie ever going to end? Because it just ended up going on so much longer than it needed to. I'm like, oh my gosh, they still haven't done this? This still didn't work? Come on, just end the movie already. We don't need... A bunch of plot twists to happen. We just need the movie to end at some point. It doesn't need to be this long. It, but other than that, I didn't completely hate the movie. I thought it was, for the most part, average. And because of that, Independence Day Resurgence wasn't um, a complete disappointment for me. So I was pretty happy about that. And on a, pl on a plus note as well, I did get to see... A double feature of the original and the new one in uh, the my theater that the nearest multiplex theater I can get to so that was a fun experience and it definitely helped me to compare the two movies uh, together overall so that I knew exactly how good the original was compared to this new one but with that guys um, I do want to say that Independence Day while not being Independence Day resurgence while not being as good as it's uh, original 1996 uh, uh, can't, predecessor, um, while not being as good as that, it still was a pretty average action kind of cheesy movie. So I gotta say that Independence Day Resurgence is worth watching in theaters. Oh man. <sighs> yeah. So. Yeah, I kind of over-exaggerated a few of my points about the movie, but for the most part, I didn't think it was completely awful. And if you're going in just looking for a campy, cheesy action movie, you're going and just turn your brain off, you know, you're going to have a fun time with this. If you're going in looking for a little bit of nostalgia, you're going to get that too. If you're going in looking for an actual serious action mo movie that works well as a movie, you're gonna be kinda mad and disappointed, so I wouldn't recommend people like that go and watch this movie. Of course, I watched the Independence Day, the first one, many times before I saw this, so I was really pumped for the movie overall. Anyways, guys, I want to thank you so much again for watching this video. If you liked it, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Uh, okay, so, videos. I am really lazy in that I I should be getting more videos up in a week than I usually and I have been doing and I'm sorry about that I it's just it's my fault completely that that's been happening but I want to thank you guys if you <laughs> for watching my videos anyways because of because you guys are just the best too if you do watch my videos so uh, thank you, or seriously, thank you so much for watching my videos. I know I don't upload a lot, and I know I'm not the best quality uh, YouTuber out there, but I really love doing what I do. I'm currently actually writing a script for a action-adventure movie. Not exactly the best script, but I hope it'll work out for what I'm doing, and I 
can't wait to actually go and start filming that. Uh, and yeah, I just want to thank you guys again so much for watching. If you have seen Independence Day Resurgence, comment below what you thought about it. And if you haven't, what did you think of the original Independence Day? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you not understand why so many people actually do like it? Or can you get into that sort of movie? And if you can, do, com do comment below. I really would like to hear your thoughts on those movies. And again, once again, guys, I want to thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.